Um, I'm always impressed with what this guy does. We all are. Mike Dettelier joins us from the Bayou. Yay. Mike, what's up? Mike. Good evening, guys. How y'all doing? <laughs> Good what's, evening. That's so formal. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was gonna say, what what is what, what mic is this? <laughs> Give us the Bayou mic. Yeah, man, I'm trying. Uh, man, it's been one show after another. All these uh, Louisiana guys signing yeah. yellow shoes. So it's all been great. We're still waiting for that Saint signing, but uh, we may wait a little while. Yeah, you gonna sign the long snapper like the Cowboys did? <laughs> we, well, we don't need the long snapper. We 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 need a pass rusher and somebody to protect the quarterback. Yeah, we can feel you on that one. Uh, so, Mike, I'm gonna start with this because I got really excited when I saw Josina Anderson's report for like 30 seconds that uh, the. Uh, the teams interested in, in Jameis Winston were the Browns, Titans, and Giants because I want I want Jameis here for the entertain, entertainment value. And then, like thirty seconds later, I found out it was Cleveland. Um, we just had a caller that's a Saints fan from New Orleans, and he said, "Man, that guy's beloved down there." Yeah, he is. Uh, you know, he was a good dude here. It didn't work out uh, with him. Sean thought initially he could be the heir apparent to Drew Brees, but uh, injuries sort of curtailed that and um it, it just it never quite meshed to be honest with you and i think Jameis always looked at himself as a starting quarterback and um then you know well once andy dalton took over that was the end of that story and then they went out and spent a ton of money on Derek carr so you yeah. know that wasn't happening and he was going somewhere else uh, i'm i'm actually a little bit surprised he went to cleveland to be honest with you, I'm, I'm surprised that that's where he ended up uh, because he talked about it toward the end with us that uh, I was looking for a team that I have a chance to compete for a starting job. Now, Deshaun Watson, man, it's been a wild roller coaster ride with him because uh, he looked so good early in his career, then the off the field stuff, and doesn't play for a year, and then he gets suspended for a good portion of another year. And he got hurt last year, and he didn't look good at times he was healthy. Uh, so they wanted to work with Deshaun. They got a lot of money, and everything sort of tied up with him. Um, again, it surprised me that he ended up in Cleveland. I, I really thought it would be more like a Titans team that had a young quarterback mm -hmm. that in case it didn't work out, he could come in. So it surprised me with Watson and uh, ended up in – you know, in Cleveland to be uh, Watson's backup uh, for Jameis. But uh, it's a great guy here. Um, he always was sort of funny uh, with everything, and he, he kept you uh, uh, loose, so to speak. Yeah. If he, had to do it. he was a great interview. He, he really was. That's why but I wanted it him. It was a disappointment because I think a lot of people remembered the Florida State Jameis, mm -hmm. and that guy we rarely saw here. He yeah. was highly inaccurate. Man, he took a lot of chances throwing the football. I mean, uh, he really believed he could put a football anywhere out right on the field. And he showed it every week that he played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Dettelier with us at Mike Dettelier on Twitter, SaintsReport.com, WWL, one of the uh, famous radio stations in America down in New Orleans. Um, Dawn? Yes, one of my favorite moves that the Titans are allegedly making is – uh, they're shoring up their center position. And, and to tell you, I don't have to tell you, it's been an absolute disaster here in Nashville for a long time on that offensive line. And Lloyd Cushenberry gets a, a reported amazing deal. And you know him well. You know from his time at LSU. And you raved about him when you texted me about it. And, and I think this is the Titans' best move right now in free agency. Tell me I what you know. I agree with you, Dawn, 2,000%. Um, the hardest position to play in any sport and football-wise is quarterback. The second hardest is center. Mm -hmm. you got to know what you got to do, but also you got to figure out what the other four guys around you got to do, okay? If you And you making calls and adjustments, you calming down the quarterback. And, oh, by the way, you better make damn sure that you get the snap right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We had issues with that last year. <laughs> yeah. And so um, I saw him at Dutchtown High School, a little outside of Baton Rouge. He was not heavily recruited by LSU. He was a back burner guy. He, was um, it because of size, Mike? 
Yeah, I think, but if yeah. you saw him, he he's a six two guy, but he's got like an eighty inch wingspan. Oh gosh. So he's this real long armed guy, but he was not tall. And I don't have an issue with a six foot two center. I really don't. Uh, because I think leverage and body balance play such a big part in playing that position. And you can get under the pads of, of a defensive lineman. And a lot of times, if you're a six four center, they get their hands and they kind of push you around. And then uh, he committed to South Carolina. And then I think he was wavering on that toward the end. It looked maybe Mississippi State. The night before National Signing Day, and that's when this was in February uh, back then, mm-hmm. um, LSU's got a roster spot. And they give it to Lloyd. He he was he came in at the bewitching hour for LSU. <laughs> and so he redshirts that redshirt freshman year. And then he comes in and he takes over that center position. And he gave me a great line in 2019 because I think he was one of the unsung heroes of that football team and keeping Joe Burrow healthy and making a lot of adjustments up front. And so, you know, finish practice. I go to talk to him, get an interview. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, you know, we've talked to, you know, so many times. Kind of give me the lowdown on what you're – what's your details this year? What's the most important thing you got to do? And he, he looked at me and said, coach, see that guy that wearing number nine? My job is to keep him upright. Hmm. <laughs> he I was damn it. right about it. That was his job. <laughs> and his it. deal was, I got to keep him upright. And he said that because if we don't have a shot, if we don't keep him upright and it led to a national championship team, he came out early. Uh, I thought he was a, Good, solid player uh, for the Broncos. Uh, and I'm surprised Sean let him walk. Do I understand finances, you know, getting involved with there? But he's a leader. He's smart. He's technically sound. And um, he takes over the huddle. And he takes over out on the field. He's a natural leader of men. And, uh, you know, centers, that's your job. Mm-hmm. You got to take control up front. And you will like the drummer in a band, okay, it's the beat that you've got to keep up and the other people follow you. And that's what Lloyd Cushenberry does. Uh, he's a really good football player for the Titans and uh, glad to see him. Uh, it's it's a young offensive line and they'll have somebody else, I think, in there pretty young after the draft too. But he, he gets it. He, he understands it and he can calm the nerves of a young quarterback. And I think that is sometimes overlooked when you look at a center because uh, sometimes you get a little bit hot or a little bit cold and you can get down, you can get real high. And and the center's job is to calm his nerves. Which is perfect because Will Levis is an emotional (laughs) player. Yeah, that's (laughs) real. You know, I mean, I don't see him getting down, but I see him getting too high Mm -hmm. often, you know. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, there's Man, a there's great. a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean. <laughs> I love. I love that on everything. Birthday Street here on that t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. I love everything you said about him because that's something the Titans have been missing since Kevin Mawai and Ben Jones at that position. You know, um, so and and then Detilier. I even got other random text from you know LSU people being like, "This guy is not only." legit on the field but one of the best human beings on earth off the field too so yeah. we're he's excited a good dude. he's yeah. a good dude in life i'm telling you and um he had to fight for everything yeah. he, he was not the guy uh, he wasn't the guy Les didn't want him to be the center he was not Les miles's choice uh but you know in recruiting back then you know <laughs> i'll laugh today and say about you know all this money, you know, it's new to the college game. And I'm like, how many years you've been uh, doing this? It ain't new to, them. It ain't new to me. Uh, so, uh, it's just I, more I public. It. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's much more out front today, and you can't get in trouble for it. Or at least you shouldn't. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I just think he was a guy that sort of understood that he wasn't going to be the biggest, fastest, strongest, but he's going to show you how good he is every time he stepped out on that field. And he and he's efficient uh, as a pass protector. He does a good job with his hands. He's he's got some power play there, but he's so technically strong. And I 
I always watch the feet and lower body of a sinner and how well he can move and adjust because, you know, 10 years ago, most of the pressure in college and pro football was coming off the edge. Today, that's not the case. It's more 60-40, mm-hmm. and it's getting closer to 50-50 where a lot of that is coming in a straight line right up the middle. And so your job is to make sure somebody picks up that, that guy coming up the middle, if it's a safety, if it's a delayed blitz by the defensive lineman, if it's a linebacker, you got to be able to pick that up. And, and Lloyd's really uh, good at that. And we saw that in, in both 2018 and 2019. He did a nice job of, of settling everybody down. And, uh, you know, LSU hasn't had a first-round pick offensive lineman since Alan Fanica. Dang. Who's in Pro Football's Hall of Fame. Wow. Just think of that. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and so, uh, you know, he wasn't, you know, Damian Lewis was a good player and, and on that team, and he got paid pretty well, too. Glad to see about Damian. He got zero offers coming out of high school, went to a JUCO, and uh, I think he, he cashed in the Powerball ticket. Uh, well, he will tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but, uh, man, I'm, I'm glad for Lloyd. He's a good football player. I think it's it's a nice spot for him. Uh, where he can be one of the leaders of a young football team. Yep. Mike, um, we, we, Titans got the seven pick, and uh, I, I expect them to go lineman or a skill position where there'd be a receiver. Tell me, how impressed were you when you're looking at second round? May not even be there, but a guy like Brian Thomas Jr., man, what did, what did him jumping off out of the combine, how impressed were you with him? I know you got to see him, but Brent for loves everyone him. else, yeah, he does. <laughs> Brian Thomas is never going to get out of the top 22 picks. Uh, yeah. uh, he's he's a guy that I didn't I couldn't tell you a lot about. He's sort of a neophyte as okay. far as the football player is concerned. He picked it up late in his high school career. He's more of a basketball player, track athlete, and then all of a sudden came on strong as a junior uh, and a senior. But he uh, the one thing with him is I can't teach a guy to be big and fast and Brian is both he's not one step fast now but that second step you you better catch him because either that or he's blowing past you (laughs) he caught the ball much cleaner this year uh, than he did in the other two seasons at LSU I thought he was a bit of a body snatcher he caught the ball up against his body all the time Mm -hmm. now he's learned and Cortez Hankton the receivers coach here did a really good job with him catching the ball out front with his hands and then man he's out into the open field you got troubles <laughs> because if he got a step on you you're not catching him uh he's he's got that pull away ability um uh, getting off of press coverage is gonna be the one thing he's gonna have to work on because he's He's even though he's got a little bit of weight on the body, I think he physically has to get stronger with his arms and his hands to get off press coverage. And uh, once he can learn that, I think he's going to be a really good player. And to you know, we just left a situation where you know Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and then we get Malik Neighbors and and Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, Louisiana has become wide receiver U. <laughs> That's so, crazy. Yeah, LSU. But they got they got them all over, and some of them didn't end up here. Just think, Keon Coleman, who is at Florida State, I love him. In the original Michigan, he went to Opelousas High School in in Louisiana. Um, all SEC receiver Trey Thomas is from Southwest Louisiana. I watched him. He was a, a he play, he was an option quarterback. Mm. He came to our camp, and that's when I saw him catch the football. I told one of the guys there, well, you can forget about him playing quarterback. <laughs> He's playing wide receiver somewhere. Um, and it, it's amazing. Jaquan Jackson, uh, who's in this draft class, uh, he played his high school football right up the road from where I live at Hornville High School. Uh, he, he's going to be a middle-round pick, guy with great speed, who went to Tulane. So and they got some receivers. But to see both those guys at the same time uh, emerge as, and I think Malik will be a top five or six player, and then I think Brian's going to go in the top 22. Uh, uh, not just what he did in the combine. You can see out on the field. Because if you're going by combine stuff, then you then you, you shortchange. Yeah, uh, I rarely will move somebody because of a combine mm-hmm. workout. 
because that doesn't tell me if he d- can play the most important thing. Can he play football? Right. Okay. Can you play? Uh, and maybe uh, if something medically turns up bad, you, you may have uh, some feelings on lowering him, or maybe you find out about certain things. But, uh, man, Brian Thomas Jr. is a really good football player. I'd be shocked if 23 is up on the board and he is not uh, off of it at, at pick 23. Mike Dettelier. Hey, Mike, uh, thanks for the time, man. I uh, really appreciate the the stuff on Cushionberry and and uh, we'll get you on again and talk some more draft stuff. Man, too bad y'all couldn't get Patrick Queen. That would have been a nice pickup for you guys. Yes, you know? it would have been. Good fit with yeah. Pittsburgh. Yeah, yes, he signed on Pittsburgh. Patrick Queen got a great deal. Of, he's the first player in the history of Livonia High School to ever get an offer from LSU. Wow. Huh. <laughs> think of that. He came in, he was like 203 pounds at LSU. I, I told him, what you play? And he was like, uh, well, I played running back in high school, but he said, Coach, I'm going to play uh, linebacker. I was like, okay, good luck with that. Uh, so, <laughs> man, and he struggled uh, for a little while, and he got some weight on him. And he, he be, man, that 2019 season, he, he moved him inside, and he, he really showed how good of a player he could be. Great instincts, could run the field well, smart, could drop back in coverage well. So, um, I thought he might end up, that was the one guy I thought would end up with the Titans. I really did. I thought that was a good fit, uh, for what they were doing defensively just didn't turn out. And, um, I told somebody with the Steelers today, y'all got a good player. Patrick Queen's a really good football player. He went to the enemy. Yep. Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to tell you. Thanks Mike. Appreciate you, man. All right. Y'all tell, have a good time hey, and uh, be good. Is coach O doing okay? You guys good? Does he? Man, he's stealing money at this stage, but I've been telling him. That. <laughs> yeah, he's doing well. I'm doing well, T-Boy. I'm doing well, T-Boy. I want him back. I want him back in college football. Yeah. Um. Good luck with that. Uh, I think um, he, he saw the changing world and uh, oh, yeah. of college football, and it caught it. And uh, he had a couple opportunities to get back in, but um, – I think uh, he's enjoying life and uh, having to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and you recruiting and you, you know, you hit the bed at 12, 1230 and always like me, you get that three or four hours sleep needed or not. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Never ends right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. All righty. Y'all 